Greetings, Nerd Castle. Tis I, the King of Indie, Splattercat. Happy to have you here today for another episode of Weekly Indie Newcomer, the weekend series where you and I take a look at a little indie game that's been bouncing around my brain over the course of the last week. This week we're taking a look at Ferionic. Ferionic is a cool little game. If you ever played the old Prince of Persia, not the new ones with all the weird sands of time, like, I guess those are old now too, but like the original Prince of Persia from back in the day. If you took the combat from Prince of Persia back in the day with like the parry, backstep, slash, and then you combined it with Dark Souls and made it 2D in Egypt, you would have Ferionic. This game is very, very cool. It's an incredibly unique title. I am impressed that an indie team managed to pull this one off. Because it's a game that really does feel like it was made by Ubisoft or like a bigger company with a larger bankroll. So anyways, without further ado, you're going to want to check this game out for yourself. Let's get started. You're here to see some gameplay. And so that's what I'm going to give to you. Let's see here. We got new game rocking. Let's do this thing. We get to choose our character. We got to set our name. Uh, Daggy? I don't know if Daggy's the name that I want right now. Let's go with Dougie. There we go. It's similar but the same. Where you can be male or we can be female, whichever you would prefer. I'm going to go with a dude for right now. I'll probably go with, oh, I don't know. Let's go with this guy. A bunch of hairstyles that we can have. I'm going to go with the cornrows because I think deep down I just wish that I could have cornrows. Hair's too thin. Can't do it. Hair is too thin. It won't hold the braids properly. Uh, I just gave up on it. Meanwhile, we can't be clean shaven. We got to look like a bad, oh, this guy right here. This looks like the kind of guy that comes to collect your taxes or something. Back in the old days, that thuggish sheriff. And then we gotta choose our voice. Heavy man. Let's go with Heavy Man Dougie. To the Red Pharaoh, master of the two lands, all life, prosperity, and health. In the year three of his reign, Pharaoh Amosis liberated Egypt, vanquished the invaders, and raised their capital, Avarice, to the ground. In the year five of his reign, the Pharaoh came back to Egypt in great triumph, bringing a powerful relic from Avarice, for he hath conquered death itself. I like how they have eagles delivering crucifixes. In year 14 of his reign, the Red Pharaoh reincarnated for the first time. In year 439, the Red Pharaoh reincarnated for the 30th time. I know they're onks. You don't have to correct me. In year 440, the horde of sea peoples invaded Egypt. That guy's getting stabbed in the back. He's having a rough day. From the Irem inscriptions, circa 1100 B.C. No questions. Not right now. We have to make haste. This Hecastele will only be stable for a few moments more. But you wouldn't survive the teleportation. Not in that state. You will have to fight your way out of here. If you make it past the guards, meet me in the village by sunrise. I shall have answers for you then. If you don't make it, alas, may Ishtar have mercy on the two lands. I'm from the Bay Area. That's not a heck of Stelly. That's a hella Stelly. That's what it's called from now on. Hella Stelly. What you got over there? Oh, that's just my hella Stelly. Alright, so welcome to the game. This is how you play it. Wast controls your character, makes him run back and forth. Uh, left click is a light attack, right click is a hard attack. You can also, is it? No, middle click is a hard attack, whereas right click is block if you're running a shield build. That's right, there's leveling up, there's builds, there's all kinds of good stuff. I saw it by Horus, who was that woman? And why did she choose you? You're nobody. I have a family, damn your soul, get me out of here. Nah, you've been cut too many times, I can't help you. Ishtar be praised, so my sisters have chosen you. I hope Astarte is right about you. Now go, make haste, and talk to Juai. She'll help you. She's right ahead through that door. We gotta go talk to Juai then. Juai? Where are you, Juai? Huh, so the priestess sent you. By Horus, you look half dead. Here, take my canteen. It still has some water left. Have a drink, you need it. 
And so we got a canteen and a torch. We need to equip this stuff, so let me throw that torch on. A gulp of life water will heal your wounds. Use it wisely. Hey, go! Get out of here! So there's our torch. I can show you how to fight now. We can get down. We can also do like back steps. We can do rolls if we want to. We can do all kinds of fun stuff in this game. You can do kind of like a parry dodge right there. The water jar, it's actually, it's they tie this in later on, but there's an oasis in the middle of the desert that gives you water that'll allow you to like live forever if you drink it. It's our Estus flask. In the top left hand corner, we've got stamina, which is the green bar. We've got the red bar, which is health, and we've got the blue bar, which is mana. You can cast magic, which is actually pretty powerful, but that's later on once we get a pack pack. You, you're not a guard. Sir Ket, take me. How on earth have you... Doesn't matter. Look ahead and you see that thing with the blade? It's a trap. Tread carefully. You can dodge it if you're fast. Good luck. Let's see how I do here. And there it is right there. And so that's how you dodge a trap, Splattercat style. That works in combat too. If you time that right, you'll dodge anything they throw at you. You can also backstep and then there's also a parry that you can do by pressing the F key, but that's for later. First they took my son for the army and he died fighting the foreign bastards. Then they sacrificed my wife to the Red Pharaoh. And now here I am. Avenge me, stranger. There's one ahead. Kill him before he turns and make him suffer. And there goes our first victim. We have defeated him. We've dispatched him with a flaming cudgel. Now the game is completely and totally 2D. I will try to dodge that right there we go. Now we got him. And that's how the game functions right there. Like, that's seriously, you need to learn to dodge, you need to learn to parry, and you need to learn how to get the hell out of the way of the attacks that are coming because this game is unforgiving. You lose a ton of XP whenever you die. I'm ready to spill my blood for the two lands. To the Red Pharaoh, all life, prosperity, and health. Ha ha. You seem a little bit upset. Get out of the way, pillows. Apparently their sacrificial dungeon is full of pillows. I gotta get them out of the way. Can't have them taking up my space while I'm trying to escape. Got no pants on, being all naked and shit. I don't have time to talk to other prisoners, so I'm just going to grab some treasure here. We got a torn shield and a sacrificial dungeon map. Let's go ahead and equip that shield because shields can be helpful. Sort of depends on what you're trying to do, but there it is. Got ourselves a new shield. And so now we can block damage. However, you still will get hurt a little bit and you lose stamina. This right here is the same thing as one of the fires from Dark Souls. This is where you'll respawn if you die. It refills your health, your mana, and everything else. It also refills your Estus Flask. You don't level up here, though. You level up by these trainers that are just... Oh, I got smacked in the face with a torch. Get out of the way of that right there and let him have it. He dropped a little bit of treasure. And it's going to be $50. Hooray! We got a little bit of money. Got some spending. Oh, this guy's got a blade. This guy pulled a blade on me. Oh, he swung twice. I didn't realize he was going to swing twice. I'm a little terrified now. He's got me outgunned. Oh, get out of the way. Oh, he got me that time too. Damn it. I thought he was going to go twice. I'm, I'm out of stand. I'm, you know, I'm just going to stay the hell out of the way. I'm just going to do a lot more back dodging. You can also dive through your enemies in case you were wondering about that. And that's actually really, really important for positional reasons. There's enemies later on in the game that have all kinds of different weapons that do all kinds of different things. It's important that you learn to position yourself smartly when dealing with enemies in this 2D environment. Because there will be spearmen that will strike over the shoulders of the guys in front of them. There's all kinds of stuff. Ow, I'm getting jacked right now. There's the kill. We got another $100. Cool. Everything's expensive in this game, though, so don't get too excited. It's not $100 like in the real world. It doesn't have buying power like that. Most things in game cost about $2,500. Now, we can't go that way, so we got to cross this way. And inside this chest, I don't remember what was in here. A bronze sword. Oh, that's way better than what we've got. And so the stats for this, it does 50 damage, so it does more damage than what we have. Its speed is slower, however. That's okay. It looks like a big badass shiv, and I want it. Well, well. Aren't you a tough one? Ever thought about joining the Desert Scouts? We're not in the Majay anymore, are we? Here's the deal, stranger. Find the key and get me out of this hole and I'll teach you. Make an elite Majay out of you yet. Deal? Alright. And his quest, I think, is inside this little room right here. I can't recall. Well, that guy ducked me easy. I thought he was going to go twice. I'm going to get him, though. I'm going to get him. Oh, and he dodged him properly. Now, each of the guys that you kill, they can drop their gear. They have a baseline percentage chance to drop their hats, their pants, their armor, their weapons. It just doesn't always happen. we got a linen skirt over here. 
Yeah, let's rock it. Now we're a lot less naked, and we've got it hanging off the side like a rock star with a bullet belt. Because that's how we do. We're fancy when we're down in the dungeon. All fancy and shit. We've got this lady over here. Okay, so she's got a shield, which means we got to learn to parry. Got to learn to parry to get her out of the way. She's going to swing twice. Shields up. Knock it out of the way with the F key using parry. And then we're just going to step back a bit. In general, you should be quicker than a lot of the guys in this dungeon. A naval shield. It depends if you want to have a heavy shield or not. You can spec your character a couple different ways in this game. You can go heavy weapons, heavy shields, heavy armor, light armor, and any combination that you really prefer. Ooh, he almost got me. Not for lack of trying with that Kopesh. Trying to get up in my bit. I'm going to try and finish him right here. Nope, didn't get lucky enough. Get out of the way of that one. And these guys are really, really easy by comparison to the stuff you'll be fighting later on. That's a level up, which means that our health bar gets a little bit longer. And our stamina bar gets a little bit longer, along with our mana and other stuff. Going to be important. You kind of want to level up. I think my current character that I've been playing for a while is sitting at level 10 or 11 at the moment. I don't know. I got stuck. I've been banging on this boss for a day or two now trying to get rid of him. The game gets difficult. There are absolutely some enemies and encounters in this game that are going to give you some trouble. So if you like a challenge, I recommend it. The controls are just like razor tight. Like they're so good. We get a little bit of weight. We got a crown of thorns right there. Yeah, that looks pretty badass. Got ourselves a little bit of a Conan hat rocking. Letting people know that we're coming to hear the lamentation of their women. Move, pillows. Get out the way. Who are you? Oh, he's a sleeping guard. Okay, we don't have time for his shenanigans. Got a heart plate. I think I shall. Oh, we're getting equipped up now. There's a lot of gear in this game. No lie. There is a ton of cool stuff that you can pick up in this game. And by the time you get to the end, you look like... The most elite Egyptian battle warrior ever. You look pretty heavily armed, even by, you know, ancient standards. Oh, I was about to get hit right there, but I got him with the knockback. Got him with the knockback. Let's go. Heavy strike right there. Heavy strike did not accomplish the death that I hoped it would accomplish. And you can, like, actually, you can combo into heavy strikes and out of heavy strikes and all that kind of stuff. The game has a lot of cool features in it. What is this? It hurts. Damn, spears. If only I had a bloody shield. What are you looking at? Think yourself fast, eh? It doesn't matter. You can't dodge a spear. Believe me. Better block it. Take it from me. So there are enemies that are immune to certain evasive types, meaning that you can't really, like, dodge them, or you can't block them, or you can't do one thing or another. He's going to taunt me. However, you can duck through him if you're spry enough. Oh, well, he got me right there, though. I was late. I was late with it. Sometimes they have another move that they put in right after the spear. Got him, though. He can drop the spear, too, as far as I know. Water, hey! Hey, you water, do you have it? I'm dying of thirst. I tell you what, you give me a sip from your canteen and I'll give you a Shabdi gem. I've no use for it, but a warrior like you can surely use it. Deal? Come on. Yeah, have some water. Gulp. Thank you, you saved my life. Here, have the Shabdi gem. Shabdi gems are how you level up your skills. You trade Shabdi gems for leveling up your skills. So whereas your HP, your stamina, all that kind of stuff... Oh, that doesn't look good. I don't remember how to dodge this one. I think you just dodge it like that. You've got immunity frames as long as you're dodging, so it should be all right. We've got the key of Keti's cage and another Shabdi gem, so we should be ready to level up pretty fantastically here once we get him out of his cage. Oh, I'm all out of stamina. Hold on. You'll be able to attack and defend a lot more once you get further into the game and you start getting a longer stamina bar. At the point that I'm at, I'm easily able to... Oh, I ate that one to the face. Was worth it, though, because you're dead and I'm not. Drink that water. Yep, there it is. Got my sluice in a jar. All right, that's actually what that is. It's, e it's his Egyptian whiskey. Just getting nice and drunk. His Swiskey. Got it all up in there. Ah, it's good to stretch them old legs again and smell the desert breeze. All right, listen up, soldier. I was a captain of the Medjay tribes or the in Thebes for ten harvest seasons. Pay attention and you'll be as invincible as my desert scouts. Hold your sword like this. And so now we can trade those Shabti gems. I'm going to go for light armor. And I'm going to go for light weapons because that's going to be the most useful in the beginning. I haven't had a lot of luck. My playthrough, I've got heavy armor, small shields, and small weapons. And there's not a lot of heavy armor around. Not a lot of heavy armor around. So you have a really, really large selection if you go with light armor. If you go with heavy armor, eh, it's not really around that often. Get a couple swipes off right there. 
The enemies' attack patterns do get a lot more complicated as you get into the game. You're going to start fighting mythical creatures and stuff like that, too. Everything from ogres to archers to giant, like, there's just big dudes that are, like, ten feet tall with two-handed weapons that will just, like, lay into it. I think if we go all the way down this way, there's, like, some treasure or something. I can't recall, though. Whew. Duck those spikes real fast. This guy's got a spear, and he's a different color, so you know he's coming at us hard. Oof, ran out of stamina at the wrong moment. Come on. You ain't got nothing for me. Down he goes. What did we get? We got a blue chest guard. The blue chest guard. Oh, wow, that one actually comes with a shirt. Hooray! We are clothed! We are no longer nude fighting our way through the enemies here. We can go this way right here. Oh, but we got an ambush. Bad for us. Oof. For positioning right now, we probably want to be a tad more careful. Oof. Gotta drink my Swhiskey here. Oh, got you now. Got you cornered up. Yep, that's game over. We got a linen headdress. Yes, I would like to put that. I gotta get the do-rag. Gotta keep myself looking fresh. It's gonna get all messed up by like sweat and all that other shit? Nah, not today. Uh uh. We look clean with this fade. Trying to get in on that guy, but they're not making it easy. Sometimes, if you're really, really lucky, you can combo him and it'll actually give him a little bit of a. I guess a flinch animation. If you get that flinch animation, it'll save you a bunch of time. Victory! We've got a reinforced skirt. Oh, that one's got like a big belly plate thing. Yeah, take that one right there. See, he was wearing that, and so now we can loot it. It's kind of cool how they got the little, they got the little loot tables and stuff that you can get down on. What's inside this chest? We've got a Mitani sword, and that's actually a heavy weapon. And you see how big that bastard is? It's like fable sized. We actually don't have the skill to lift that right now. You would want to take the skill points because it reduces the weight allotment for the weapon and makes it a lot easier for you to wield it. If you don't have skills in a particular item, you take a penalty to its weight allotment, which actually is quite a bit more difficult. I think I should be able to just back out of the way of his strike. Jump back, wait for the stamina. Oh, you want me to come at you, huh? All right, I mean, if that's what you want. I wasn't sure that was what you wanted, though. He had 150 bucks. Apparently, it was payday for him. Apparently it was payday for him. What's inside this chest? We got a used skirt. Gross. It's lighter and it has more armor though, so I guess I'll take it. It's a little bit brown though. We may want to hit that thing with some bleach and throw it through. I don't know. Hit it with some Snuggie or something. Or whatever the hell that detergent is. We got a couple of doors here and I don't know which one I want to go through. Navigation in this game can be a little weird. You press the M key, it'll give you this and this is the map right here. You just kind of have to be aware of where you are. That's how we leave the zone, and this one over here looks like it has something inside of it. Let's go have a look real quick. Like it might have a prayer stone or something. What's he got to say? I saw her, the Hecastele over there flash, and that priestess appeared out of the blue. A while later, she came back, disappeared again through the stele. Damn, if only I could get rid of these chains and teleport out of here, but uh, don't get any ideas, stranger. It's not that easy to activate the Hecastele. You need to be one of those daughters of Ishtar to use it. Best of luck to you. You do want to talk to everybody in this game. This is definitely a narrative-driven game, and there's quests you can get for all the random people around. The Shield of the Guards of Amun. Oh, that's pretty sexy. It's got, like, a big gemstone on it. That's kind of cool. Nice. I'm not going to rock it, though. I'm going to keep what I got going on. I don't think you get a better shield for a little bit when it comes to light shields. I think you get one on the back end of after you get through the village, you might be able to loot one. Oh, that one got me. That one got me, and I'm all out of Swiski too. I got nothing going for me at the moment. I gotta get my I gotta get my Swiski all taken care of. That wasn't what I was going for, but that works. Maybe this one over here. I mean, I could run back, and I could use the one that's behind us. But if I do that, it resets all the enemies, just like Dark Souls. But anyways, there's our there's our fountain of sluice, and so we've got our Estes flask all nice and filled back up. Health is looking good. We're about to get to level 2, so that'll be nice once we get there. I thought that guy was going to parry sooner, but he didn't do it. He's actually eating hits to the face behind that big old shield. Go ahead and knock that up out of the way, because I ain't playing those games right now. Ooh, almost got me. 
Almost got me. I love the controls in this game. Everything feels really, really good on that front. For a game that prides itself on fighting, you want to make sure that everything feels tight and responsive. And so far it has been. I haven't played the game with a controller, but I heard it's available with a controller. But on the keyboard, it feels great. I mean, everything works exactly how you would expect it to. When you push the key down, things happen and they work. And there's those perfect little openings for parries and dodges and that kind of stuff that you have to nail if you're going to be good at the game and you're going to make it far without getting yourself killed. My legs, I can't feel them anymore. Hey, you. You have to watch out. I tried to escape just like you, but I ran into that big brute ahead. Couldn't parry his blows. I don't think anybody can. Don't make the same mistake. He's slow, though, so try to dodge and do me a favor, will you? Kill him slowly. Will do. This dude's getting stabbed up. I don't know if he's going to attack twice on me. Yeah, he's going in twice right there. Woo! Tried to get me, and then he whipped around, too. Out of the way of this big bastard. Ooh, almost got me on the backswing right there. Going in for the kill. Did he drop anything? No, that's what he gets for fighting nude. Gotta get yourself some more loot, broke guard. Messing with the champion right now. Messing with the heater. Hear that? Night and day. Hear those screams? It's the warden! The warden likes to carry out all tortures personally, and I'm next by Horus. I'm next. Take this. It's my... It's my ring of endurance. I can't take this anymore. Hooray, the ring of Sobek. That, I will pray for you, and I will pray that he finishes you off quickly. I think it just gives us more stamina, I'm pretty sure. It gives us the stamina of the crocodile. Welcome to the first boss, everybody. The Warden. Could refill our sluiski or our swishki right over there, but I think I'm just gonna keep it with me. I don't remember what this guy does. I guess we're about to find out, aren't we? Okay, so he's got like a little ground move right there. Okay, it looks like he's got a little double strike, too. Ooh. It's got a little leap on the back end of it, though, don't it? Uh, it doesn't look like he's going to be too much trouble. I think we got this. Almost got us right there, but you got to be brave. You got to be brave or you ain't going to make it. I was going to say, that one I might have to duck. It's possible I might have to duck that one. Oh, can we get him? Ah, and there's the level up, so we get a little bit more health and a little bit more stamina. He's going to drop some loot, but it's right next to the door, unfortunately. 500 bucks. Not bad. Not bad for an afternoon's work. What have we got? Ah, the Tablet of Blessings. So this is our first backpack item. Our backpack items can be activated by pressing the R key, and they're your magical spells. Your backpack determines what happens when you press the R key. This one right here makes our stamina come back at like a stupidly fast rate. I've got one equipped right now in my main playthrough where I throw like a Hadouken. I'm like, Hadouken! And I, I throw a fireball at somebody and it does a ton of damage. Mira, my sweet Mira, last if I could see her eyes one last time. You, stranger, do me a favor. In that chest you find the Tablet of Blessings. It used to be mine and now it's yours. Its magic is powerful and will protect you. When I was the head of the Temple of Amun, I had one shot, or I even had one that shot divine arrows. In exchange, please tell my Mira and tell her I died honorably. I think Mira's like right out here when you walk outside. Like she's pretty close. And nowhere is safe in this game. Keep that in mind. Who are you? Ah, Stardy Ishtar be praised. You made it. Tell me, who are you and what do you remember from before you were captured? I see. Well, I did bestow the blessing upon you, so now we shall see if you are the Dougie that I seek. I am one of the daughters of Ishtar. We have been resisting the tyranny of the Red Pharaoh for centuries, and now we have a chance to end this nightmare. The Sea Peoples are coming from the north, and war is nigh. In this chaos, you should be able to infiltrate Thebes and do what must be done. 
Thieves is guarded by magic, which is too strong for me. You will need to find the four idols. We have been tracking them for years, and now I have located them. Reports say it would be in the Oasis of Shadet. I have given you the Heka power, so now you should be able to use Heka Steles once you find them. Follow this road to the end until you find Teheb's market style. She has something for you. Be careful. Set Mod is full of Majay soldiers. And remember, the Oasis. Be on your way, and may Ishtar protect you. Yeah, anyways, I like this game a lot. I mean, this was one of those games that took me by surprise. It definitely was a lot more badass than I expected and pretty well put together. So, at the end of the episodes, I like to talk about what I like and didn't like about the game, and so let's get on that. I actually really liked Ferionic. From the top to the bottom, it was a game that really actually left me with a really good impression. There were a couple little things that I would nitpick along the way, but not really. I mean, from the start, anytime you have an action game that's relying on like dodges and parries and things like that, you're looking for precision in the controls, and I think that the game delivers. Art style-wise, I'm glad they decided to go in like a Disney kind of World of Warcraft, Blizzard, exaggerated proportions type direction with it, because I do think that will help the game age well. Uh, a few of the things, you know, the characters feel a little bit floaty sometimes when you're moving around. Uh, it doesn't feel like there's a lot of gravity in the game, but aside from that, once you get used to it, there's nothing really to worry about there. The game does have a pretty vicious learning curve, so if you don't like being challenged or at least having the deck stacked against you this one can be a rough game I've actually banged my head against a couple of the bosses and had some trouble with them but if you stick with it I promise eventually you'll get good enough and you'll beat them the only other thing that I would say is the game occasionally has hitbox issues that would be my main complaint and it's very very rare so don't take this wrong I'm not saying that like every single enemy has hitbox issues but enemies with two-handed weapons that are excessively large and or long they occasionally get free hits on you regardless of what you do because the weapon will swing behind them as well as in front of them. And in a lot of cases, there will be no way to dodge them. There will be no way to backstep or go forward. Occasionally, characters will have animations that allow them to launch like 15 feet in front with the weapon in like a position where you've got nothing you can do but block. And in those situations, I don't like the fact that you're forced to soak the hit right there by blocking. It just feels like maybe there should be some evasive path available to you. However, these issues are very much in the minority. I think I've only hit one or two enemies in my time played that have had those issues. In addition, the combat can get a little bit repetitive, so what'll end up happening is a lot of the times you'll need to backtrack through zones a bunch of different times and the enemies will all respawn. And because the combat is kind of evolved and on occasion you do have enemies that are kind of damage soaks and things like that, it could just be a little bit tedious backtracking around. I think the game could use a couple more teleport stones and things like that because you will be fighting the same battle over and over and over again if you're like running quests around and things like that. But I think that's pretty much it for the complaints that I have. So anyways, if you wanted to get Ferionic for yourself, you can definitely check it out on Steam. I got a link down below. It's $15.99. If you enjoyed it, make sure you stop on in and give it a little purchase. My name is Splattercat, the king of indie. The game we were looking at today is called Ferionic. The series is called Weekly Indie Newcomer. I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts about this game because I actually liked it a lot. If you like this series, make sure you stop on by next week on Saturday where I'll have another piping hot indie game waiting for you. Hi to everybody and I'll see you there.